Hi, Steve here from Goldfields Campus. Welcome to the handover video for the Iron Stone. Let's start with your main power board. We turn the power switch on. Up here we've got your battery monitor, which indicates your amperage and your percent of the battery. Down here we've got your two water tank gauges, your front and your rear. Now that the power's on, take a look at the fridge box. So I've got the locking latch, I've got the slide latch, comes all the way out. Take a look at the pantry drawers here. Through the handover, the process is we just want to make sure everything works as its proper function. Excellent. Then we'll have a zoom in here, and we'll, that's your cable management cord for the fridge. And then in here you've got the light. You've got a 12 volt extra plug, and then you've also got a fan. So. This vent operates as, as a vent all the time, so it lets in, in air in and out. And then when you turn it on, on the super hot days of 30 degrees plus. The cable management system keeps the fridge cord out of the runners. Including the iron stone, the fridge stone. Put up like so. This keeps your fridge from moving while camping. In this next compartment, we've got three drawers. Again, just checking the operation. Make sure everything's running really smooth. It's all great. All locked up. Move along. Here we've got the power connection for your air awning. So we've got your side table, your 10 amp outlet, two waterproof speakers, and your kitchen light. Let's check out the side table. So we've got a 12 volt socket, dual USB outlet, and another 12 volt socket. Let's have a look at the kitchen. Here's your gas outlet, which we'll use later. kitchen and then right at the end we just want to put a little pump out and that stops your kitchen from rolling back. So we'll put our pantry dish rack. Light, which just turns on down there. Utensil straw. Cutlery drawer. Four burner stove. Put the X bracket, you know, we take that off each time we use it, and then we've got the piezo ignition. And what we're doing is just checking that again everything works, and we've got the preparation bench. And if we come around, we've got the gas outlet. So I've got the gas bayonet. So we plug that in. So all we need to do is just push and turn. Push and turn, and that's on. To strengthen the kitchen up, we've got legs. So we put them down on the angle first. And then we just lift the camper up, the kitchen up, move the legs into position. When cooking for the first time, you just want to hold the gas down on full for five seconds. This will clear all the oxygen out of the line. So we've got two water tanks on this camper. So each of the water tanks it has its own separate pump. So when we get to the camp destination, we'll turn on the water tank and leave it on until the pressure builds up. At that point, the pump will turn off. And every time you turn a tap on, the pump will turn back on, push the water out, build pressure back, and when you close the tap, the pump 
will turn off. So I'll just go through the operation of this light. So it's just a single touch that gets to a colour, single touch gets to your amber, and one, two, three, four, brightens it up. One, two, three, four, brightens it even more. Just at the rear of the camper, if you ever need to change the tyres, uh, we've got two clips either side, so you remove them, and then the tailgate panel just drops down, and you can get access to the tyres. We've got the rear pole lock. These poles are all for internally in the camper, and window poles. Your awning is all air. We've got two four x four recovery points, one bike rack mount. Here we've got the vent for hot water. We'll talk about this a little bit later on. Then we've got outlets for your hot and cold water. Now this Anderson plug is for a solar charging line, so you use your solar panel when charging. You've got your 15 amp inlet. You plug this in, and this charges your batteries and uh, points throughout the camper. 120 litre water tank. Hot and cold water shower. 40 litre water tank. And this is your access point for your air conditioner. We've got two large drawers in this cupboard. Again, we're just making sure the operation of these. And then in here, we've got your peak bag with some guide ropes, any repair kits you may need, and the pegs. Also, you've got your pole diagram. In this cupboard, we've got our air compressor for the air awning, manual pump for the air awning, and fire extinguisher. Here, we've got the two 20 litre jerry can holders. In here, we've got the front lockable toolbox with the air ensuite in it. Then we've got the nine kilo gas bottle holder with your regulator and hose. For new regulations, you need this gas bottle fitting. We've got your Arc XO jockey wheel, your handbrake, your breakaway system, DO35, seven pin flat plug, and Anderson plug for vehicle charging. You've got two front taps. These are for your water, hot and cold. We've got six clips that we are two, three clips each side. You can either push the camper over or you can winch it over. We'll show you both ways. Once the camper's open, we want to push all the buttons on and then go around the outside of the camper trailer, pulling any Velcro down and Velcroing it up. So to use the step, we lift it up at the back, forward, push around, undo the door, and then we sort out the cushions. So we'll take the air awning out, then jump in and put up your six poles. Turn the lights on, and then we'll plug them in. We'll grab the lights from underneath the mattress, and we'll plug them in. Then we've got two more on the other side. So we'll set the poles up. So push and hold with the quick clips. And then with the bed ones, you just push out, and close. And then we do the lounge room. So now set up the rear lounge room area. Now we've got all the lounge room cushions set up. We'll go through the electronics and air conditioner. You've got your two internal speakers, your inverter, power point, you have 240 mains power point, hot water switch, inverter switch. Then we've got our 12 volt outlet, USB dual outlets, and air conditioner control panel. We've got our radio, 
our air conditioner remote, step light, control switches to operate the radio. We just turn it on with that bottom button. It's FM radio, then cycle through to AUX, and then finally Bluetooth. And then to turn it off, it's one, two, three, and she turns off. So to operate the air conditioner, the hot water unit, and any of the 240 power points, we just need to plug into the 15 amp inlet so that we've got power. This also charges your batteries. To operate the air conditioner, we need it under two vents, one and two. So we turn on the air conditioner. This is your ambient temperature and this is your mode. So we've got cold and hot. So if we're in the cold position, we want to go down to the lowest, which is 18 degrees. And then this is also your fan speed. So this is ventilation for the air conditioner. And then three adjustable variable vents. And then for the heating mode, you can go right up to 30 degrees. You can also control the temperature by the remote. You can access the air conditioner and it has another point which you can turn on and off. We'll leave it on. To use your inverter, we just switch on and then you've got 2000 watts of power coming out of these points only and that's through your battery. Underneath, we've got your inverter, your inverter breaker. This breaker is for your Anderson plug at the front. 240 outlet, two batteries, another 240 outlet. This 240 outlet is for your hot water. Your breaker for your 240 mains. And this is a 12 volt breaker for the solar at the rear, the Anderson plug. So when the inverter's on, it uses standby power. So if you're not using it as an inverter, when you don't have 240 plugged in, always keep it off. So when you're plugged into the 240, the inverter also acts as your battery charger. So to operate your hot water, you can operate it either via 240, or you can operate it via gas. So we've got your Truma hot water service which switches to 60 degrees in the unit and then 70 degrees in the unit. So that heats the water in the 14 litre tank and then when the water comes through the temperate valve it mixes it down to 49 degrees so any water in any tap will come out at 49 degrees or below. In here, we've got the fuses for the power control panel, your antenna for your radio, and your radio. Right the table, just lift the clip and pop it down. Same to close it, lift it, and pop it down. You've got two number 14 support poles for the end, and then four number seven support poles for the roof. Put these up in windy conditions or rainy conditions. To set up the air awning, all we want to do is use the air compressor provided and plug her in. So to inflate, all we want to do is make sure all the valves are all nice and tight, find the right connection, plug her in and press on. And when we press on, we want to inflate it to 7 PSI. Side, and away we go. Ensuite can be set up at the rear of the 
camper or the side. And you can use the shower here. These are your main connection valves for the air awning. They can be opened up to use all together or closed up so you can inflate the awning in sections. The living room can be made into a full bed. So we've got four stabiliser legs. So we make sure they lock in and using the tool provided. We just want to wind down until they've got good pressure on them. And this stabilises the whole camper once all four are down. To pack the camper down, we want to undo all the poles and undo the wires and tuck them back in. Make sure when you're packing up, you leave the quick clips open. cushions and bags are packed away, we'll close the door and fold her up. So we undo the winch strap and hook it to the front and then to get it up on the roof you just use a C-clip pole and lift it up onto the saddle. Now yeah, we just wind it over. When you get to the halfway point you just want to go along and make sure everything's nice and neatly tucked in. Get on winching over, we put the hook underneath the roller, hook it on and pull the camper top down. Quick cut on either side and then do the final winch. Then we just use the clips, pull the lid down, put up your stabiliser legs, and you're ready to get on the road. Every extra pack is different, it comes with every camper trailer. So this one includes a toilet, a 200 watt solar panel, and a 100 litre fridge freezer. The Onstone comes with a 100 litre fridge freezer. It's a dual zone fridge freezer, so you can run these two compartments as fridge or freezer, fridge or freezer. So we'll set them up, turn it on. We'll set the, this one at minus 20, and this one at, my, at three degrees. So we'll hook up the trailer now. So we wind down the jockey wheel, And then once it's on the DO35 pin, we click the latch and put the lid on. Once the lid's secure, you know the pin's been engaged. Then to unlock it, push down on the pin, push the slide, and then wind up. The arc jockey wheel's handle comes off. It's also adjustable to different heights and then it can swing up. So we've hooked everything up. So we always cross the chains and that's if this detaches the unit will land there. Then we've got the seven pin plug hooked up and your Anderson plug hooked up and then your breakaway unit. So this is your fail safe. If all of this fails, uh, this pulls and engages the brakes and locks the camper trailer brakes on full. So this is your breakaway unit. So we just press the test button, it's on full currently, then low and charge. And when you want to charge, you just uh, grab a battery charger, hook it into the Anderson plug and charge up the small 4 amp hour battery. So now we'll test the lights on the camper trailer. So we've got the right indicator, we've got the left indicator, then we have the lights and finally the brakes so just a few final points on the handover before we head off we like to lock all the doors uh, this is for safety and security then also at 400 kilometers 1000 kilometers and then every three to six months of the life of the trailer we always want to check the wheel nuts and then when we do any water crossings we definitely want to check the wheel nuts that night for the servicing on the trailer, we like to service the trailer every 10,000 k's for on-road conditions and 5,000 for off-road conditions. Battery maintenance is very important on the camper trailer. When we come back from camping, we always want to charge the camper straight away. And if we can leave it on charge, 
or charge it and check it every three months.